When is the right time to start a second YouTube channel? If you're a video creator, you've probably asked yourself this a few times before. That's why today I'm interviewing YouTuber Karen Carr, who has two very successful YouTube channels. She's gonna be sharing her tips with us. All that and more coming up right now on YouTube Insider. Owen Video! Really exciting to have you on the show. You've really done a tremendous job with both your channels. Tell me, what is it that you do and what are your channels about? I began as a real estate agent and I kind of morphed into training other real estate agents. So I now have two channels. My original channel was for people that were interested in buying a home or selling a home in the market where I live. And when that just exploded and it was working so well to bring me new clients, other agents started coming to me saying, what are you doing and, and how does this work? And will you teach me how to do it? And can I pay you to teach me how to do it? And <laughs> yeah. so after I was trying to put videos for agents on the channel that was for consumers, I finally came to the conclusion that you can't do that. You need to have a separate channel. And so the YouTube for agents channel was born. What was the big problem you ran into with uploading your real estate videos to this, this other channel? I mean, I was making videos originally, Hey, you're thinking about buying a house in the Savannah area, or Hey, you're thinking about selling a house in the Savannah area. Here's stuff that you need to know. And then there would be this random video of me talking to real estate agents of here I am at this big real estate conference and we're talking all about video and this is everything that I'm learning. And those videos were getting a ton of views because I knew that a bunch of my viewers on that channel were agents. So I thought, well, this is dumb. I have two completely separate audiences and I'm trying to attract them both on the same channel. I need to just create that content for a separate channel. Set me up then with the uh, with the environment of, of setting up this second channel. Did you stress out? Like, was it stressful for you to think, oh, I got to start the second channel? Or did you kind of, were you excited about it? Oh, I totally stressed out about it. I yeah. fought it for a long time. I had people telling me, you need a second channel. And I said, yeah. no, 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 I don't want to. It's too much work. It's I, I don't want to. Yeah. And finally, you start thinking, okay, this is silly. I'm telling people, do not upload content for, to your channel that is not what people subscribed to find out about. So right. if you have a real estate channel, you don't want to upload videos about how to cook you know, shellfish. It's just, it's not the same audience. And so right. I was not using my own advice. And finally you know, said, I just need a second channel that is for real estate agents who want to learn how to do this. So walk us through the process that you followed for starting this second channel. It was actually an old channel that I'd had forever where I was uploading baby pictures and dog <laughs> videos and yeah. stuff like that. It was not getting used. Right. And I had one video that had kind of gone viral. My dog had a crazy long tongue and her tongue hung down so long that we tried to get her to win the Guinness Book of World Records. Wow. And this video that I put on there got half a million views without wow. my doing anything. I just went and looked at it one day and went, oh, it's had 500,000 views about this video of my dog. Are you kidding me? So I kept that channel and I made all of those old videos private. And I just used that channel because I already had so many views on it. And I right. thought maybe, maybe that will help me in the eyes of the algorithm. I don't yeah. know if it will, but it's gotta be better than starting from scratch. Yeah. And you know, it, it probably didn't, you know, help you too much, but I love that you just made a decision, right? As opposed to sort of like, oh, do I do this? Or, oh, do I do that? You're like, you know what? I'm going to use this channel. I've already done some stuff, make them private. Let's go. That's exactly what I did. I mean, I didn't know if it was going to work or if it was not going to work, but it was easier than starting from scratch because I already had it. All I had to do was hide the old videos that had nothing to do with YouTube. That was fine because if they're actually unlisted and occasionally people do find them in Facebook groups and whatnot, and they're yeah. still getting views, even though they're unlisted. Sure. So that's okay. Sure. Fine. You know, whatever, like you're, you'll take it, even though it's who knows what it's doing for you, but your, your new stuff is, is doing incredibly well. Has, has starting a second channel been advantageous for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I started the coaching program, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just winging it. I was like, people were asking me, will you teach me? And so I kind of developed this whole company not having any idea what to do. And after it started to take off, I thought, hmm, maybe I should actually have a plan. Maybe I should learn how to market this thing. Maybe I should learn how to go after my target audience and right. promote it. And so it was kind of like I made the thing first and then I learned what to do with it. And the channel has helped me so much because 
it's all just free content. It's like one giant lead magnet that funnels people in, people that have never heard of me before. Right. They come across the content. If they like me, they subscribe, they start watching more, they go to my website, they get the lead magnet, the whole thing. And so um, it, it's been a huge, a huge help for my business. Yeah, and from what I understand, you had a, a launch that, that did, you did a, a product launch that did incredibly well. And I wanna talk about that in just a second. Um, first, let's talk a little bit about the time management of uh, having a second channel. You know, how did you balance the time between, you know, channel one and channel two? Did you did you find that there was like a, a symbi symbiosis with those channels or, or did they cannibalize on each other? I don't think they cannibalize on each other. They they I had scheduled upload days. And so Monday is the day for the real estate channel and Thursday is the day for the agents channel. Okay. And so I try to just keep them separate and think of different buckets of content for each channel. Yeah. And as well on the, the channel that I have for the real estate, that, that took off so well from YouTube that I hired a team. So now I have other agents that work with me and they're making videos too. Oh. So it's me as the sole provider of the content for that channel anymore. Thank goodness I get wow. to share the the other people. Okay, yeah. so how do you manage the uh, the the day-to-day -day YouTube disciplines or the YouTube tasks, right? Like thumbnail creation, um, topic creation, ideation, those types of things. Do, do you do all of that and then trickle it down? Or is there a team meeting? Do you outsource the thumbnails? Talk to us about like how you manage all the things that have to get done. We have a team meeting. Um, we used to do it weekly, then we've kind of been doing it more monthly where we brainstorm what are topics that we think would be of interest and then who wants to do which one, we make cool. sure that it's everybody gets a date. So Dawn is going to do it on this day and Nicole is going to do it on this day and I'm going to do it on this day. And each person is responsible for creating their own video and they like editing, so they have to edit their own videos. I have a virtual assistant. I have offered to let them use the VA so many times, but they're like, but we like the editing, so they do it themselves. And then they give it to me, and I'm the one that kind of manages the channel. So I upload it to the channel. I get the thumbnail. I write the description. So I would love to be able to start outsourcing all of that part of it, too, because it is a discipline and it does take time. What about the the second channel, the new channel? Is that something that you're in sole control of or do you also have teammates and outsourcers for that channel? Well, I have my VA who does all of the editing for those videos, which is, thank God, she is a godsend, seriously. And then I do have somebody that makes the thumbnails for me, but I'm still the one that uploads the video and uploads the stuff. I don't okay. have somebody else that could like, I have a brand account. They could manage the channel for me. I yes. just don't have somebody that does that. Did you hire... Uh, locally, did you hire overseas? Um, is that is that a, a big cost for you, or or did you find some some bargains? It's a ridiculously low cost. I my <laughs> very first virtual assistant was in the United States, and she was charging me thirty dollars an hour, and it yeah. was like that is. So now I have a VA in the Philippines who charges me like $2.50 an hour to edit these videos, and they're so much better than anything I could have edited myself. It's That's awesome. Kind of ridiculous. So yes, and then I use Fiverr for thumbnails. I found the wow. guy on that I just I saw somebody else's channel art and I said that's freaking amazing where yeah. did you get that he gave me the guy's name he then made my channel art I said you do thumbnails as well and so I've just been so happy with the work that he's done that I keep using him over and over again did you see an increase or a decrease in your click-through rates when you outsource to someone else uh, absolutely yes you and I have talked about this many times my original thumbnails that I was so proud of were really not very good at all and then I started using a software program to kind of automatically generate them for me. Yeah. And I think you said, I hate those thumbnails on more than one occasion. And so finally, when I picked somebody that could make them for me and do like a consistent design theme, yes, the click-through rate went from like 3% to, you know, 10% overnight almost. Yeah, it was pretty incredible, you know, and you you were doing pretty well with the other ones. You were still at like a 6% click-through rate on some of those. But then I think the one that I saw, the highest one was like a 12.9, like a 13% click-through rate. And it's incredible. And that actually costs you less than you doing it yourself, probably. Oh, totally. You yeah. Know? And that's the thing that it's so funny. It's like, you know, physician heal thyself, right? Where these yeah. are the things that I tell my students all the time, but then it's hard for me to do it myself, where I say, listen, if you want to make $100,000 a year, you can't be doing stuff that you can pay somebody $5 an hour or less to do yeah. because you would pay yourself $30 an hour or $50 an hour 100%. to do that. It's not a good use of your time. But 
You know, it's so, it's like you said, it's your baby. It's so hard to give up the control and I know what I want it to look like. And so I'm going to try to make it happen myself. And once you give away the control and you go, oh, this looks so much better, then it really is liberating. You know, it's interesting you bring up the physician example because a physician also takes the oath to do no harm. And when you're making your own thumbnails and you're not a design expert, but, but you do your thumbnails anyway, you're doing yourself harm. And so when it comes to your YouTube channel, I'm going to think about both of those things, right? Do no harm. Just hire this out. There are people that can do it uh, easier and better than you. And it gets it off of, of your plate so that you can focus on the content of this new channel that you're you're working on and you've done some pretty fantastic content uh talk to us a little bit about the successes of your second channel yeah it, it, you know it was slow growing at the very beginning but i was i knew who my ideal audience was i knew exactly who i was talking to and what mm -hmm. they wanted to know what were the questions they were asking me in my facebook groups all the time so yeah. i felt like i always had a great um source of content of what these people wanted to learn about and they were loyal subscribers and they would watch all of my videos and i thought it was doing fairly well mm -hmm. but i never had one of those videos that just really took off and went viral and that's yeah. what i wanted to do, try to see some really massive growth and if that happened how many more real estate agents would then become familiar with right. me and what I do? And then what would that do for my, my business? Not the YouTube channel itself, because my goal is not to be YouTube famous and that's how I make all my money. Like I, I do have a coaching business and the YouTube is really just a, a vehicle to help me get in front of right. people. Right, right. At least right now it is. Um, but with the way well, you're right. going, yeah, I mean, sure. yeah, the way that you're going, you, you know, that's going to be a nice little side income. Uh, eventually that will really, you know, take, you know, take off for you that could uh, open up into some new things. But talk about, um, you know, I think a lot of people worry if they start a second channel, they're going to, you know, separate, dilute their creativity a little bit. And like one channel will get maybe more love than the other channels, like the redheaded stepchild. Um, you, you've been able to outsource that first channel. And then with this second channel, um, you, you started a coaching program and, and with, by the way, with me, ladies and gentlemen, but you, you also, you, you've maintained control of the content and you've had some, some big wins. Um, talk to us about some of the big wins on, on this second channel. Like we talked about your, your click through rate has increased. What other, um, sort of breakthroughs have, have occurred for you? Um, through starting a second channel. There was this one video that I did that was how to hire a virtual assistant. And I get asked that all the time. Like, how do you find somebody? How do you know if they're any good? And so I did a video on how I found my VA. It was not a sponsored post. It was just me talking to the camera. Yeah. The company that I referenced in the video somehow found out about it. They put it on their website. They then ran ads to it. And yeah. the next thing I did, it had 20,000 views. And now it's had something like 100,000 views. He said, oh my goodness. So I made sure I put my affiliate link in the description box. <laughs> <laughs> that really helped my, ch that helped my channel get monetized. I was yeah. literally at like 3,000 watch time hours and I was so close. Like I had enough subscribers. I just didn't have the 4,000 hours of watch time in the last 12 months. That video put me over the edge and was able to make my channel get monetized. So that wow. was really cool. That's pretty yeah. incredible. Then, yeah, it was a very nice little bonus because it was completely unplanned and it just kind of happens. It wouldn't have been made if you only kept the one channel, right? Absolutely right. Because this was a video, like I said, it's two completely different people that are watching the videos. This is somebody that wants to buy a house in Savannah. And this is a real estate agent that wants to learn how to get new clients without spending a thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads, without having to be like, hi, I see you got a for sale by owner sign in your front yard. What's it going to take for you? Just hire the right agent to sell your house. Like right. people are still doing that. And and it just, it makes me cringe. Like <laughs> nobody wants to get sales calls like that. So oh, yeah. why do you still do it for three hours a day? Yeah. Who's even making those? I don't even know anyone that wants, that wants to make those sales calls. Yeah. You get these two people that like, we hate this. Why are we still, why are we still uh, um, uh, doing this? But you know, one, one high point I want to talk about, got to be sure to mention this is that with starting the second channel, you actually um, had a pretty big product launch. Talk to us about that. And quarterly, I would do a big push of I'm going to open the doors and who would like to come. And I was using Facebook Live and YouTube as the vehicle for getting my content out there to let people know that the launch was coming up and would you be interested in joining? And yeah. as a result, 
the launch that I did at the end of February was the biggest launch I've ever had where I got like $50,000 in sales in that wow. five, it was a 10 day period that was far surpassed anything I had ever done previously. Uh, that's, that's incredible. You know, $50,000 on a launch is, is no small thing. For those of you who don't know what a product launch is, it's, it's how you sell internet marketing information products like courses and things like this. And you did fifty thousand uh, dollars. What was that process like? Like, what? Walk us through what you did there. It was crazy. I I had I had hired a business coach about a year ago and yeah. said, "Teach me how to market this thing because people want it and they're buying it, but I don't know how to get it out there because I'm not a, an internet marketer. That I sell real estate. That's not my thing. Right. So my coach said, "We're going to do Facebook Lives and we're going to do a five day challenge." So you're gonna go live each day for five days. You're gonna teach them something. And then at the end of the five days, say, if you really like this and you enjoy my teaching style, you might wanna sign up for my coaching program, which is what I do, where I go into a lot more detail about all of this stuff. So yeah. I kind of gave them the what and the why, but if they wanted the how, they had to sign up for the program. Okay. And every time I've done that five day challenge, I think I've done it four times now. Like the first launch, I was good. it was really good. And then the second launch was even better. And then the third launch was even better. And this time was like, I'm setting a giant goal. And it scared the crap out of me because I did not think I was ever going to hit it. And when it started happening, it was like, no way. Oh my gosh, is this actually going to happen? It, it was insane. And the, man, the day that it actually hit, boy, there was some celebrating going on in my house. Starting a second channel seems like a huge time investment. And I know that you have a family. You probably have friends, you know, that you engage with. Um, has starting a second channel dominated all of your time? Like, how do you balance between two channels and a career and a family and a social life? It is definitely a discipline. I really put it on my calendar and it is an appointment that I just don't break. I figure no. if I'm going to record on Thursday mornings at 9 a.m., I don't suddenly schedule another appointment at that time because I would not cancel a, an appointment with a client to That's take so an good. appointment with a client. So That's so good. When it's on my calendar, it, it's not negotiable. And it, it's if you if you let it slide, it's a slippery slope, then it's easy to say, well, I'll do it next time, and then you don't, and then I'll do it next time, and yeah. you don't. And I'm, I'm very proud of my, on my Georgia Coast Homes channel, in three years, we have never missed an upload except for one day when we had to evacuate for a hurricane. So it was wow. a legitimate excuse. Well, but, kind of. I mean, a little pansy I, to me. I mean, but. Yeah. All right, Karen. Seems like you've had a fantastic journey. Let's wrap it all up for our audience watching us on YouTube right now. Tell us again, why did you start a second channel? Because the people that I wanted to reach with the second channel were not the same audience as the people that were on the first channel. I just felt like you can't be trying to catch two fish with the same fishing pole. You really need to have two different fishing poles. Would you say that starting a second channel was beneficial or not beneficial for your brand? If you are trying to reach the exact same person, then there's no need to have a separate channel. But if you're trying to re reach a completely different audience, who is interested in something different and it's not the same like ideal customer avatar, then by all means, go start a second channel. Incredible. Karen, how do we stay in touch with you and follow what you're doing? You are welcome to follow my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Karen Carr. And my website is youtubeforagents.com. Karen, thanks so much for being on the show today. It was great to hear from you and can't wait to hear more on what you're doing with your second channel. <laughs> Thanks, Owen. Thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click on my interview with Sean Cannell here as we dive deep into his secrets for growing a successful YouTube channel. Click on the video now. I'm Owen, and I'll see you there.